Hey everyone, it's Laura and I'm standing outside of the vegetable garden today. Things are really coming together now and starting to really gel and look like the space that I had envisioned. I've got these two beautiful emerald green arborvitae spiral topiary kind of framing out the uh, arbor here and I'm just really excited about all of the wonderful progress that's been made and I'm excited to start showing you guys more and more of it. I feel like they add just a gorgeous structure to this entry space. We can see it from our dining room window and it just it blows my mind the transformation. Uh, it's a big difference and this was our driveway still is we have two spaces behind the camera here where we could still park and a couple spaces out front because people do ask me that all the time um and now the garage is now a shed and i just feel that parking my car in this asphalt space was wasted uh it was just an opportunity to grow some things and to create a whole new space of enjoyment so i'm so happy that i was able to do that and to be standing here and to be able to show you some of these things so in today's video i just wanted to quickly kind of tour you guys around the backyard and show you some of the things that are blooming right now uh you know with the garden things are fleeting here today and gone tomorrow so there's some beautiful wisteria and things that are in bloom that i'm really excited to show you right now uh with that keep in mind things are still in progress I've got beds to shape I've got mulch to put down and drip to install in various areas so it's still very much um, you know an active working space uh, that I'm shipping away at but I didn't want to miss the opportunity since things are so quickly fading in the garden uh, especially as the temperatures warm up and head into uh, into the summer temperatures and show you some of the beautiful spring things that are happening right now so, so right here you'll see a menagerie of dahlia tubers that I have to plant and then here's the new entryway these are emerald green Arbovitae spirals from Bower and Branch. And I planted those up, I think two weeks ago. And then I just have some uh, Super Junior Bordeaux and some Super Bells over Easy. Uh, just mixed in those two plants. They're on drip and tapped into my uh, half inch drip tube right there. You can see the tube connecting right there. And they just come up through some drain holes in the bottom that I did drill into these. These planters are by MPG and I got them from Home Depot online. I will drop a link to those below. So this feels like a really long time coming and I'm extremely excited to show you guys the progress. Uh, it has really, really come so far um, and I'm just so happy with it. So when you come in right now, I have, this is a dwarf fig. It's called Little Miss Figgy. So it's a dwarf fig tree. So that really fits into the vegetable garden space. I'm looking forward to seeing that bloom this year. I did have some figs last year. And then over here, I have some Benjamin Britten climbing roses. Those are David Austin's. And I have two pot trellis. Those are from Plow and Hearth and they come in two different sizes. And I've got my sweet peas growing up those. I just popped in two lavender the other day and I think I might make this herb garden space. I have some um, Sun Credible annual sunflowers planted in here. Oh, and also have them planted up along the fence too. I thought it would be really, really beautiful. Those get to be four to five feet tall. And I thought it would be so pretty to see that from the street view and just, just a beautiful thing to see the sunflowers kind of peeking up over the picket fence. And then I have a limelight uh, hydrangea standard there. And those are pansies planted in September of this past year. And they all came back so beautiful. You'll see I have a couple pots turned over here. It was so windy the other day. I kind of pushed it over here and, and huddled it uh, real close to the side here of this uh, raised bed. 
I direct sewed some, what are they? White eyed Susans, uh, climbing vines. Very pretty Thumbergia. It, it looks just like your standard Thumbergia, but it, it's white, very beautiful. And then I planted some starts of, um, white eggplant and i think those are really going to take over this trellis pretty rapidly so i may need to rethink that then i'm just starting here starting to kind of do a really sweet little grouping of things i really love all the mix of pots and everything so i've got some kent oregano in here this is a may night salvia some lemon balm nemesia um these are shasta daisies daisy may shasta daisies and um what was I going to say about those? They should be blooming soon. I'm seeing little buds on them. And then a little pot of chives. In here, I'm going to put some sugar and snap peas. I did that last year, and they worked out really, really well. And then turning back around, I've got uh, in my window box, I did a video um, planting this one up. It's got the pink cushion flower, scabiosa, uh, goldilocks, creeping jenny, which I'm going to have to keep in check because these will get pretty thick and aggressive so I'm gonna prune on those so that they don't take over the whole basket and I don't like it when they get all long and scraggly and just like heavy and crispy looking so I'm gonna prune on those a bunch that's Anna's magic ball with the uh, Goldilocks creeping Jenny and just some pansies that came back from fall Here's my little bunny Sir Henry I picked him up at the Philadelphia flower show this past season and then the benches from Plow and Hearth. Uh, this is a uh, snowball, snowball viburnum. I've got my obelisks along the fence here. And then in between these, I'm gonna have uh, espalier apples. I'm so excited. Those are being worked on right now by the team over at Bower and Branch. And I am exceptionally excited. Uh, there's gonna be four varieties, uh, Fuji, um, a Fuji, a Gala, Honeycrisp, and Macintosh. And so they'll all have different bloom times. And if you guys aren't familiar with what espalier or espalier uh, trees are, they're the kind that are trained and where the branches are against a trellising structure or a wall for support. So they're perfect for tight spaces. You'll see I made a little bed here. And uh, so they'll look just beautiful here and go down the line, four of them. I'm very excited about that. You can see in the back there, the shiny cupola. Um, that's gonna be installed next week. So we're gonna have that installed on our roof here. And so my veggie beds are looking really, really nice. I've got everything set up. You can see I have uh, this little teepee trellis that I'm working on to grow some beans. So what this is, I just bought some long bamboo stakes from Lowe's. And then this is a long piece of birch. And I kind of wanted to play off our new, new birch tree in the back there. So I'm not finished yet. These are uh, actually little, sorry for the shadow, little pieces of willow. I'm repurposing these from a basket that I made in the fall. And I'm kind of just going to go along. I'm going to do two rows, bundles of the willow branches on each side. And then I'm going to fasten it all together at all the joints with twine. And I think it'll look really rustic and really cottagey and um you know that english cottage style that i really love so that's that's my thought process there and then i'll plant uh trailing beans i've got um just for decorative purposes i planted some hyacinth beans in here those are not edible and then i'll put some on the two center i think i did the hyacinth bean uh but on the ends i'll do something edible i'll do some climbing uh beans there and then here is, um, this is Dwarf Meadow Sage. It's called Marcus Dwarf Meadow Sage. I've had these here, oh goodness gracious, I'm gonna say 10 years maybe. Oh no, not, not a little less than that. But anyhow, I, I love them. They come back reliably for me every year. You can see how dry the soil is. We need mulch and to, um, to make things look a little tidier pretty, pretty, quick, pretty soon because it's looking like a, a dust dust ball out here but you can see they're really thriving uh and love this location and then i planted i just picked those up at lowe's uh sea thrift and i just thought the little pink balls ball flowers with the spiky purple was just so pretty so i did that down the line and then i have right here tucked in i planted it's a cup and saucer vine so that's an annual vine and it is beautiful i'll flash a photo up so you can see what that looks like and i've got one on the other side here too 
And then I transplanted these from along the back fence. These are the uh, Zephyrine Druin roses, but these are just a lovely like fuchsia pink and they're thornless. So no thorns on these, which is great. Oh, and I didn't mention also on either side of this arbor, I planted white Claire Austin climbers. So that'll be going up that arbor. Okay. <laughs> so then over here, you'll see I added this lovely new, this is the Longwood pineapple. Uh, it was designed with Longwood Gardens as the, um, as the model. So it's their Longwood pineapple. I have a deep love for Longwood Gardens. It's close by to me and it's a place that I just love to visit and uh, it's been a long time and I can't wait to get back there. So this is from Campania International and I'll drop a link to that below as well. The pedestal was separate. Uh, let's see here. Oh, and then just a little pot here, kind of duplicated the same look. I, I kind of do a lot of that this year. I'm, I'm really matching my containers a lot. And then here is just a crazy mix. So I've got hosta that I borrowed from my parents' house that have come back beautifully and a bunch of hellebores. I put in a couple boxwood. And then this is a um, I think it's called Pop Star, Rock and Grow Pop Star Sedum. So it's a crazy mix, right? It's sun and shade plants together, but they are all happy here. They've been here a few years in this combination, and I really like the look of the textures together. And this sedum is really pretty. I just love the look of it. It's not one of the more sturdy upright kind. It is a little more on the floppy kind of trailing side. And sometimes I will come in and stake this one. Um, but just beautiful. My little bird fountain, you guys recognize that I'm sure. All, all Mostly all of my stone pieces are from Campania International. I just love their look and, and oh yeah, my little bubbler right there. That's also Campania International and kind of meshes that whole look together. I collect these pieces over time, you guys. <laughs> I've had that for a couple years. I've had this for maybe seven years, and then I got the new fountain in the back. So some spiral Alberta spruce. I just planted the window boxes up with pink geraniums, and they're called Betty White Bacopa from <laughs> Monrovia, and it really cracked me up. I bought them because, firstly, they're beautiful, and then secondly, I mean, how could you not buy something called Betty White? You know, I'm you know, singing the Golden Girls theme song in my head, just looking at it. So they're beautiful. Just a simple, like that's that country cottage look that I love. I love geraniums. And then I've got some dwarf English boxwood. These have been here for a few years now. I'm kind of letting them bush out a bit uh, before I trim anything. The ones on the sides I got a bit later. So I'm going to wait for them to catch up. I might give these a little bit of a light trim uh, to try and, you know, let the ones on the side catch up a bit. Just a sweet little pot of lemon coral sedum. And then these are some Shadowland Autumn Frost Hosta. I got those on sale at Liz last year. Beautiful. Look at the color on these. I mean, it's just stunning stunning i'd say that's my favorite hosta and then these are primo wild rose hookara absolutely love them um this is lucky charm and enemy that's a fall bloomer so we won't see anything from that right now and just a little pot of sage some ivy and a little um bordeaux super tunia bordeaux oh and this is a happy jack clematis coming from this pot elevated up a little bit there I'm trying to get a little little creative and a little more whimsical this year in the garden and then my even roses are starting to open and my goodness they are just a stunning rose the form of my rose here is not very attractive i need to work on that a lot last year these got attacked by the sawtooth fly larva very badly so not right now because they are in bloom and it's going to produce beautiful flowers here but i am going to work on kind of stripping these canes and getting a better flow and growing pattern going on with these and then this is a brother stefan beautiful actually you know what let me bring you back over here because i have a brother stefan in bloom that i think i forgot to show you i did forget to show you so I have a brother Stefan over here trained on the fence and this has got to be one of the most beautiful colors of clematis I've ever seen. This light lavender, oh, just I love these so much. That's one plant and I planted that last year and then I planted the other one that I was showing you 
on the lamp post here. Everything's looking so fresh and bright and green. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So how I attached this, this is a piece of heavy gauge fishing line. I would recommend using paddle wire because with the fishing line, the, the clematis is has a tendency to slip. Um, the uh, paddle wire they will see I have on this side, uh, it, it, they, they, they wrap to it and hold to it a bit better and don't slip as much. I've done this method for years and years. It's dirty up here, but you can see I have a little command hawk that I just stuck on here and um, that will come off. That, that will pull off in the elements. So what I did was I just took a dab of silicone and put it on the back of the command strip and kind of let it fuse onto there because I want it to stay there. Then I just ran my wire down and I put another one here, but in other spots I've taken like a landscape staple and just tied it and tethered it off to that. But it just, this is what I do on my front lamp post as well. And it works out really, really well for getting climbers to come up on structures that they can't attach to or plants that don't have the ability to attach. You know, clematis don't do that. They need help. They don't have the little feelers that grab onto things. And then, oh, my beautiful hanging basket. I did find some aphids on here the other day and that was a bummer. So I'm keeping an eye on that but it is just looking so beautiful. My mom is loving hers too, guys. Just a beautiful mix. Uh, I've got an Oakland Holly here. Very, very beautiful shrub. I had that on the patio in the winter. And then here's kind of like a mishmash staging area. I have some plants over here that I'm gonna be working into a shade window box that I'm gonna be doing real soon. And then here I have, see this one got attacked by the sawtooth fly larva quite a bit. So if you see these holes, it's most certainly what is, what is happening. Um, yeah, see this? There is a sawtooth, there is a sawtooth fly larva right there. I'm gonna squish that guy, uh, but that is what will happen and they will crinkle up your leaves and kind of just really rack and defoliate your plant and make it look like not very attractive. So I pulled a lot of the leaves off. This did have much, much more foliage on it and I removed a bunch. So I think that really kind of helped a lot. But these are the Colette Climbing Roses and I have them in a container. People ask me, can you plant in a container? Absolutely. This is their third year here. These have a wonderful scent and the color is just like out of this world. Uh, I highly recommend this rose. It's got the like the apricot and lavender and soft pink. Uh, just a really, really beautiful rose. So you can see there's an offshoot there. Again, I have my uh, fishing line as a support there. So train it to go that way. And then I'll train this piece to go this way. Little butterfly house. These got nipped in the cold snap we had. Those are um, Millennium, Millennium Allium, I believe. Um, here is a, it's a little quick fire hydrangea. So a lot of these things aren't in bloom right now. Um, Gold Splash Euonymus, that was literally eaten down to a nub this past winter by the bunnies. And it has all flushed back this new growth. And I really love the look of this one, this golden variegated green and, and yellow, just a nice, bright pop of color. I want to rework this whole bed and this is probably going to end up being my dahlia bed. So you'll be seeing those, a lot of them in here. And then this is a, now it's a, it's supposed to be a variegated, but I'm, I'm noticing it's really losing a lot of its variegation. It's called the uh, sugar tip Rose of Sharon and the flowers are absolutely beautiful, but you can see like it's really losing that variegated look, which is one of the reasons that I got this one. I liked the variegated leaves and it appears that they're all losing that variegation. These have been here. This is their third year. And back here, diamond ball clematis. These are about to burst open. Look at the big fat buds on these. They are just remarkable looking and I cannot wait for those to open. I've got those going all down the line here. So train them up the fan trellis and kind of try and get them to grow along the whole fence. This here is a twilight purple crepe myrtle and I've got three of those going down the fence here. So some yellow iris here, happy jack clematis on the post. I have a peony, I don't know the variety, but that's about to open. 
some other bearded iris in the back there. Um, that is a, what is it? Hibiscus, but it's a, um, oof, it's a, it's like a tall columnar hibiscus. I can't remember the name. I'll put a name to that, but it gets real tall and has beautiful flowers. This is another hibiscus here that will be huge. This is a pot of blue iris from my mom and dad's house that comes back every year. I just love it. I planted some verbena in the back there. A couple different hydrangeas. That's a bobo. I've got a limelight here. Some allium. Wizard of Oz Veronica. Some gara. These are some uh, digitalis that I'm um, that I planted. What is the variety here? Um, Sutton's Pam. That one looks a little yellowy. Uh, ba -ba -ba, some Gara, Yellow Sombrero Echinacea, Cat Mint. Uh, I believe this is Violet Spires Salvia. And then I think that's called Asia Snow, I think, Salvia. My favorite, Pugster Blue. And my very, very favorite. So this is Amethyst Falls Wisteria. This is a non-invasive native wisteria, and it's been here about eight to 10 years. And it started out as just a little teeny tiny, about six inches. And it very rapidly, after about five years, was almost exactly how you see it now. And it is just so beautiful. Every now and again, it might sprout out like a little runner, but it's nothing that you can't easily pull. It has not disrupted the structure of this shed. I have cup hooks run all along here with a wire, and that's how I have it attached. And I just think it is the most beautiful sight to see. This variety has tighter clustered flowers. It's just so beautiful and it's in its absolute prime right now. So I wanted to make sure that I got some good footage of this to show you guys because it truly is spectacular looking. And if you're thinking of wisteria, I highly recommend this variety. I have had no issues with it and nothing but good things to say. It's, it's just beautiful. And then I have some sprinter boxwood that I just was bold and <laughs> trimmed the other day. I'm a little afraid of boxwood, but I'm trying. I think I did an okay job. This one's always been a bit misshapen. So that wasn't from me. That was uh, that way when I purchased it. So I'm kind of trying to get it to fill in those missing parts. And then you'll see I've got two little planters on the door here. That's Creeping Jenny and the Super Junior Bordeaux. I'm kind of trying to really match everything and then a repeat here beautiful new little birdie house. This is from Good Directions and I'm going to drop a link down to them below because I love their products. They're actually the manufacturers of the cupola that I'm going to have installed. So check them out you guys. Lots of beautiful bird houses from them. And then I've got my beautiful Williamsburg Pineapple Fountain from Campania International and it is just a joy to have this piece here. We can see it clear through our house through the windows and it's just it's just something I'm so excited to have in our garden. I've wanted this fountain for so long and saved up for, for quite a while. So I'm very excited to have this piece here. And I've underplanted it with um, some, some starts of Digitalis. That's Camelot White uh, that I grew inside. So we'll see what happens there. They're tiny. I, I don't... I don't have too much hope just because I'm not entirely confident in my sowing skills of seeds yet. So we'll see what happens there. Um, White Night Sweet Alyssum, Pink Cushion Flower, Lamb's Ear. Um, I did mix in a couple Diamond Frost Euphorbia. I wanted to be really silvery and white with the pops of purple. And then a beautiful Blood Good Japanese Maple from Bower and Branch. You guys might have seen me planting in a video. Some limelight hydrangeas in the back. I've mixed in meteor shower verbena in this space. And along the back here, I've got uh, the emerald green arborvitae. And those, again, I want to remind you guys, um, these are from Bower and Branch and they're the single stem. So they're grown on a single leader. So they're not going to do that traditional flop that you see sometimes with other varieties of arborvitae where the branches will splay in the uh, snow when in the, you know, in the ice. So that's not going to happen with the especially grown to not have that happen, which is why I have them here. Beautiful shrubs. So hoping to have a nice green wall back here. And then I just planted this clematis. This is called Niobe. 
and it's a beautiful color the burgundy flowers and i think it really matches nicely in with um the japanese maple so i've got some cleome that i planted here uh, this is a weeping white spruce I've had that for about three years. And then I've got some Prairie Sun Rudbeckia, which I love, that's my favorite Rudbeckia, and the Meteor Shower Verbena. Because I figure once the clematis is done blooming, these flowers will get tall and kind of shroud that uh, area. That's my thought process anyway. And then I had a few baby gem boxwood from my winter window boxes that I just kind of popped in here to just sort of define the space. You'll see it's still very, very dry. I need to get top so it's a bit more topsoil in here and do a layer of mulch, but it's really coming along and we're gonna reshape this whole border and have some stepping stones leading you up to the bench. Now the bench, um, this one is by Achla and it is from Gardener Supply. So I will link to that down below, but definitely check that out. Absolutely love this bench. It's a little bit longer than the ones that I have in front uh, in the vegetable garden and certainly uh, check that, that out. I really, really love this bench very much and kind of centers it. Nice spot to sit. I've already sat here quite a few times looking at the fountain and all the pretty things that are starting to unfold over here. And then you'll notice a couple more topiary. I'm going topiary crazy, guys. Um, so these are the emerald green and they are uh, teardrop squared and those are from Bower and Branch. So definitely check out all the topiary there, you guys. Beautiful options. And I've got some hostas. I don't know the variety along the bottom here. And I've got a new dawn rose that will just grow super long trained along the top there uh, and it's all butted up and looking beautiful some sweet romance lavender in front of jude the obscure roses this is a bloomerang lilac it's just kind of fizzling out right now but these do bloom again just not very prolifically in the summer they'll shoot out maybe a few few blooms here or there but it smells wonderful and very delicate purple flowers i really like that one uh, jude the obscure roses which are gorgeous and then some um, what is it? Sweet Romance Lavender. Uh, but you can see everything is really starting to come together and it's been a lot of work. <laughs> I've been out here every day chipping away as much as I can. This whole border I want to change at some point, but I'm loving the way this corner is looking and certainly loving the view with the, uh, fountain and the wisteria is just, the wisteria is just sublime to me. It is like, otherworldly. I, I love the wisteria. It's definitely one of my favorites. I wanted to show you how beautiful the blooms are on this Venus dogwood. They are just huge and beautiful, creamy white. They start out like a chartreuse uh, green and they are just magnificently beautiful flowers. This is a gorgeous tree. Been here. I've moved it maybe twice. And it did suffer a little bit of shock, but it's just doing so great right now. And just frames up the corner of our porch and just looks so beautiful. Absolutely love this tree and those big, beautiful blooms. here. So I hope you found this video informative and interesting. And thank you so much for joining me in my garden today.